morning. Tell the person next to you, maligayang araw ng pagkabuhay. Happy Easter! Happy Resurrection Sunday! Are you excited? I'm excited for this morning. I uh, Let's give a clap offering for the Lord. Uh, especially for the worship team, right? They gave us, uh, they led us to a beautiful worship. And uh, in fact, uh, that kind of worship uh, prepares the heart of, peop- uh, heart of the people no, to accept the word of the Lord for this morning. And uh, yung kinunta natin, yung inawit natin, yun mismo, yung pag-uusapan natin sa umaga na to. Yan. For this morning, we'll talk about celebrating the Savior. Sabi mo, sakto mo, He is risen. Yan, buhay siya. For this morning, Resurrection Sunday, uh, we will give two meaning for our celebration. It's about love and forgiveness. Tungkol sa pag-ibig at pagpapatawad. Ayan. So meron akong dalawang story. I have two stories to tell you about love. The first story is about love. And the second story is about Forgiveness. Kaya sabihin mo sa katabi mo, magkukwentuhan tayo, huwag mo akong tutulugan ha. <laughs> Ayan. So, well, we all know we call this Easter Sunday from the word Ishtar or Easter. Came from, you know, the fertility god of pagans and uh, the rest is history. Well, during those times, of course, our beloved uh, Roman Catholicism uh, always kind of look for how to connect with the pagans, and uh, these are one part of it. But uh, ple- uh, uh, fertility, guys, why, why the Easter bunny? Ay, kasi nga, you know, bunnies or rabbits or hares are one of the uh, creatures na mabilis dumami, right? So it talks about fertility, kumbaga somehow. Pero ano connection dun sa muling pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon. Di ba? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, Jesus, not eggs, ang bida ngayon. Right? Hindi tungkol sa itlog ang araw na to. Pagka, uh, uh, munit, it's all about Jesus. Parang pag Pasko, it's not about Santa Claus, it's about Jesus. You see, commercialism is commercialism. Marketing is marketing. It makes money. You sell eggs, you sell chocolate eggs, you sell Santa Claus, you sell... You know, this makes money. So, a lot of people nowadays thought that Christmas is all about Santa Claus. Easter is all about bunnies or eggs. But I tell you the truth. All this celebration, it will always boil down to Jesus. Amen? Amen. But, are we keeping Christ in Easter? That's a good question, right? Paano ba natin sisimulan? How do we begin to explain to our kids that something as profound, powerful, and mysterious as the death and resurrection of Jesus? Parang ang hirap, di ba? Which is, after all, at the very heart of our Christian faith. Paano nga ba natin sasabihin na blessed Easter? Ano ba tama tawag? Happy Easter, Blessed Easter, uh, Happy Resurrection Sunday. Well, I would prefer Happy Resurrection Sunday, but since we're used to Happy Easter, go ahead. But the point is, let us remind our children that Jesus is the reason for this season, right? How do we help kids understand that when it comes to Easter, Jesus, not the Easter bunny, uh, is the reason for the season. Kaya nga, pilit na ikinakabit no, ng marketing. Kasi nga, it makes money. Ito ang good news. The good news is that our children come into the world, no, hardwired na sila, para i-grasp yung mga deep spiritual truths kagaya ng, ng amazing and miraculous as the resurrection. This is because children 
Kumbaga, ang, pagpan, pag, ang paniniwala nila sa Panginoon ay God-given no? na instinct. It is as natural as breathing. Jesus recognized this nung sinabi niya. Now, si Jesus siya mismo nagsabi, no? nung kinalap niya yung mga bata, ang sabi niya sa, sa Mark 10.4 and Luke 8.16, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Not just for children, but for those people who are even adults, but has the heart of a child. Right? Ang bottom line, mga kapatid, our children are hungry for the truths. And these are the truths of God. So, huwag ka mahihiya. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, don't be shy. Don't hold back. Kaya nga, malaking pasasalamat ko. At okay, bless na bless. Pwede ba natin na uh, palakpakan ng uh, hindi lang worship team, pati yung kids ministry. Di ba? For the glory of God. They're doing their best. Mamaya, nako. Meron silang hinanda para sa inyo. Kaya, eh, handa niyo na yung mga cellphone niyo. Meron silang uh, video na ginawa para sa inyo. And it, ang maganda dito, it connects doon sa ating pag-uusapan ngayong umaga. At dito, mapapatunayan natin yung sinabi ni Jesus na children are hardwired to know about the resurrection and the power of Jesus. Amen? Tell the person next to you, He is risen! He is risen from the dead just as, the, as He said would happen. Nangyari ito kagaya ng sinabi ng Panginoon na siya muling mabubuhay. Alam nyo, we have a reason to celebrate every day of the year during this time because we serve a God who is alive and filled with resurrection power, right? Not only did He resurrect Jesus from the dead, but He wants to extend His resurrection power lalong-lalo na sa every single area of our life sa panahon ngayon. Hindi ito kwentong barbero lamang, ngunit mararamdaman mo sa iyong buhay pang araw-araw. Right? Alam nyo, resurrection means love and forgiveness. And with that, I'd like to share to you two stories about love and forgiveness. Let's look at story number one. It's a story about two cups. Once upon a time, there were there was this uh, two cups or best of friends, best buddies. Every day, every day they work uh, together. They they go to work together, same shift, partners, no, magkaibigan. Not only that, they bought a house. Magkapit bahay sila. Not only that, yung anak na isa na anak ng isa, yung anak na isa na anak ng isa magkumparing buo. Hindi drug, parang paminta. <laughs> Magkumparing buo. Yeah? They were best of friends. And they love each other more than like brothers. One day, let's look at the other camp. There were four robbers also who are filled with greed, self-centeredness, selfishness, ambition, and they all want to do is you know, harm other people and get their way. And, uh, you know, just uh, do their thing. One day, they decided to rob a bank. So, the two cops were asked to respond to bank robbery. So, there was an exchange of fire. So, siyempre, high-powered guns versus uh, four against two. High-powered guns versus two hand pistols. Eh, medyo lamang yung kalaban. Right? So, unfortunately, the younger cop died during that encounter. So, the older cop was so devastated that he lost his partner, his best friend. So, for some time, no, he was called again by his superior and told him that, I will send and give you a new partner. Another younger cop, actually, una, tinanggihan niya. Why? Because no, nobody can replace his best friend. But eventually, siyempre, you have to follow your superior. And then they develop again a beautiful relationship. 
this new cop transferred to their village. He became his new neighbor. Yung anak niya nagina anak, yung anak niya ina anak naging kumparing buo hindi dorog. And then they they became uh, more than brothers. One day, the same story happened. This bandits decided to rob the same bank and the same situation the two cops were asked to respond and there was this exchange of fire unfortunately again no the younger cop was hit but uh, he's not dead yet he was hit and uh, what the older cop did was, this time it will be different. Sabi niya, I lost my best friend. Sabi niya, you are my new best friend. Stay there, stay down. At nag-alarambo itong older cop. Sabi niya, ito patay kong patay na. Sabi niya, but I will never leave you. Sabi ng older cop, even to the point I have to give my life for you. Sabi niya, kung kailangan lumabas tayo, patay parehas dito, patay tayo dito. Pero hindi kita iwan at ipagtatanggol kita. So he covered his partner, tried to uh, exchange fire no, doon sa apat na robbers. And one of the robbers actually were also hit. But, nag-gano lang. Alam niyo sa pelikula, ah, nadaplisan lang. What did the three robbers did? Iniwan nila. Yung kasama nilang fourth robber. Sabi nila, pasakit lang yan. No? He will derail us. At ang maganda dito, divided by three na lang, hindi divided by four. Imagine how selfish these people are. Right? Nagasgasan lang, iniwan. Pero yung isa, kahit dalawa lang sila, walang iwanan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, wala tayong iwanan. Ha? Si Jesus, hindi kanya iniwan, di ba? I have a question for you this morning about this beautiful story. Where is the love? Nasaan ang pag-ibig? Where is the love? Nasa kampo ba ng mga police o nasa kampo ng magnanakaw? You see, a motivation no, why he wants to give his life, a motivation why he wants to cover, protect his partner is love. Right? Because they have this beautiful relationship. They are more than brothers, not just brothers in arms. A motivation sa kabilang kampo is money. Right? Magkakasama tayo dito ngayon because of money. Now, if you are wounded, or you, 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 you eventually become dead, eh mas good news sa akin yan. Kasi divided by three na lang. Di ba? So that's the motivation. The question for this morning is, what is our motivation in this world? Is it love? Is it fame? Is it money? We must all emulate the love of Jesus. Sabi nga, sinulat ni John in uh, chapter 15, verse 13, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Kaya mo bang sagutin yung tanang na yun? Kaya mo bang sabihin sa sarili mo, kaya mo mamatay para sa kaibigan mo? Right? We were talking about what if, well, you know, most of the uh, victims, uh, it's in the school, sinihan, churches, mga mass shootings, right? So we talked about this during our board meeting. What if there's fire? What if there's robbery? What if there's earthquake? What are we going to do? So we decided that we will have a simulation eventually in one of the Sundays. Magsasimulate tayo, kunyari may earthquake, lalabas tayo dyan, and then babalik tayo agad, right? So, ito mahirap isimulate. What if there is mass shooting? Because these people are, they trying to victimize people who cannot defend themselves. Because we're, we're worshiping. For example, ngayon may pumasok. 
Usually, kung di dyan papasok, dito papasok. Dalawa lang naman pinto natin. Ang masakit, pag doon pumasok, kung sino yung nasa likod, kayo unang tatamaan. <laughs> pag dito pumasok, naku, malamang ako unang tatamaan. But that's the truth of life, right? Pero come to think of it, no, this is just a personal conversation. Sabi ko, if somebody will come here before he sprayed his gun, I will dive into him. Kahit tamaan niya ako. Right? Bakit? Kasi, if I will just stay here, he can spray his gun right away. Right? But if I, if I will dive right into him right away, he might kill me or another person, but it will save a lot of people. Right? That's the truth. Nakakatakot, pero that's the truth. Imagine, ano ang motivation? Bakit? Pahiro ka lang? Hindi, patay ka na. Paano ka? Paanong pa maririnig na hero ka? The thing is, the motivation is love. Amen? We must love one another just like what Jesus did. He died for us. Let's be clear about that. He died for us. Alam niyo, sa mundo na to, madaming naliligaw. That's the truth. A lot of people is waiting to be found and they cannot be found unless we decide you know, as a church that we need to find these people. We need to know the four spiritual truths. As basic as it is, as cliche as it is, palagi natin naririnig, palagi natin nababasa, but why not uh, we look back. Ano ba talaga? Yung lagi natin nababasa, alam mo yung sa mga uh, tracks, four spiritual laws, four spiritual truths, right? But that four spiritual truths, no, eh nakabase doon sa sineselebrate natin ngayon. Truth number one, alam mo ba na mahal ka ng Diyos? That God loves you? At ginawa ka niya, He created you to know Him personally. Gusto niya meron siyang Relasyon sa'yo, kagaya ng dalawang police. They have beautiful relationship. Ang motivation, pag-ibig. Actually, ang, ang, ang central verse, ang central theme ng Biblia, no? kung isa-summarize yung John 3.16, the heart of the Bible. Anong sinabi? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Sa ating wika, sapagkat gayon na lamang ang pagsinta ng Diyos sa sanglibutan na ibinigay niya ang kanyang bugtong na anak upang ang sino man sa kanyay sumampalataya ay huwag mapahamak, kundi magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Sabi sa mga kapatid nating Espanyol, Porque de tal manera amo Diyos al mundo, que dio a su hijo unahinito para que todo aquel que cree on él no si pierda mas tenga vida eterna. Ang galing ko mag-Espanyol. Eh. O kayo bumasa nito. <laughs> Subukan nyo. Pero, ibig sabihin yan, God loves you. Right? Alam nyo, may plano ang Diyos sa buhay natin eh. Anong plano niya? Ang plano niya sa atin, sinulat ni John, now this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Yun yung plano niya. Makilala niya tayo, makilala natin siya, and we have to, and we, so we can have a beautiful relationship with Him. Truth number two. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, makasalanan tayo. Yun ang katotohanan Man is sinful and separated from God. We are all separated from God. So, we cannot know Him personally or experience His love. It's, it is impossible kasi meron tayong agwat sa Kanya. Sabi sa Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Ay, hindi, ikaw lang yung makasalanan kasi mabait naman ako eh. Good girl naman ako, good boy naman ako eh. I tell you the truth. Even if you are the most goody-goody person sa, pal- sa pananaw at palagay mo, huwag mo kalimutan, meron tinatawag na original sin. 
Diba? Meron tayong minanang kasalanan mula kay Eva at kay Adan. You see, man was created to have fellowship with God. But because of his stubborn self-will, dahil sa matigas ang ulo natin, now we all chose to go our own independent ways and fellowship with God was broken. This self-will characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference is evidence of what the Bible calls sin. Rebelde kasi tayo. No, nakahiwalay tayo. At alam mo naman natin, ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. For the wages of death, no, spiritual separation from God. Alam niyo, tingnan niyo itong diagram na ito. Di ba? Sa baba, ayan tayo eh. Makasalanan, sinful. Sa taas, yung holy God natin. This diagram illustrates that God is holy and man is sinful. As simple as that. A great gap separates the two. The arrows illustrate that man is continually trying to reach God and establish a personal relationship with Him through his own efforts such as good life, ah, pagka maganda ang buhay ko, masiguro malapit ako sa Diyos. Philosophy, ah, mag-aaral ako, madami ako, pupunuin ko ng theology ang aking utak at makikipagdebate ako sa lahat ng kanto. Or religion. Subukan ko kaya lahat ng religion para sigurado pasok ako. Alam niyo ba ang Hinduism? Alam niyo ba na madaling mag-share sa mga kapatid nating Indians? Bakit? They will accept Jesus Christ right there and then. Why? Because they collect gods. Sila yung tipong sigurista. I-accept mo lahat para sigurado yung pupunta ka kung sa dapat ka. That's true. Yun yung kanilang, yung kanilang paniniwala. Right? The third principle explains, or the third truth explains that the only way to bridge this gap is Jesus. Yung pangatlong katotohanan, si Jesus Christ lang. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Wala nang iba. Ay, ah, e, paano si Mama Mary? Hindi po siya kasali. Don't get me wrong. I love Mama Mary. In fact, she's one of my heroes. No, I, I respect her, but I don't Worship her. I tell you the truth. Ilang libong taon na tayong pinaniwala na for us to go to God is through Mama Mary. This is a bold statement and this is not coming from me. This, this is coming from the Bible. It says here that Jesus is God's only provision for man's sin. Through Him alone, we could know God personally, and experience His love. He died in our place. Ano ka ba? Team, G, uh, team Edward ka ba o Team Jacob? Alam niyo yun, nauso dati. Di ba? Dapat Team Jesus ka. Bakit? Kasi si Edward at si Jacob hindi namatay para sa iyo. Right? But God demonstrates His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Imagine, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Here's your illustration. Would you rather be here or here? Pero how can we go to doon sa kabila? It is only through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Another truth is that He rose from the dead. Why do we need to explain? Why do we need to understand that Jesus rose from the dead? Bakit? Dahil kung walang Resurrection Sunday, hindi totoo ang Christianity. Alam niyo ba yun? Kung walang Resurrection Sunday, if He didn't rose from the dead, He will just be like other gods who are until now are dead. There will be no power there will be no parang a manifestation of He is really the true God. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, He appeared to more than 500. Sinulat siya ni Paul sa mga taga-Korinto. 
at hindi lang yun. Ah, pansin niyo dyan, sabi dyan, He appeared to more than 500. Why is it important na sabihin niya na hindi lang kay Peter nagpakita, hindi lang nagpakita sa 12 disciples, pero nagpakita pa siya sa limandaang tao. Because during those times, wala pang Facebook Live. Wala pang camera. Wala pang picture. Na nakapag-selfie, Jesus is alive, look! You know sila sa Facebook. Wala pa. During those times, ang matinding evidence, alam niyo kung ano? Is I witnesses. So dapat may establish sa document na to na sinulat ni Paul na merong 500 eyewitnesses na nakita na nakakita sa ating Panginoon. Another thing that we need to understand is that he is the only way to God. As, as just as I explained, wala nang iba. Walang santo, walang Saint Anthony, Saint Peregrine, Saint Ganito, Saint Ganyan. Pedro Calonso, do whoever, kahit Pilipino ka pang santo, hindi ikaw ang papunta sa Panginoon. Amen? Ang papunta lamang sa Panginoon na ama natin ay ang Panginoong si Kristo. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ulitin ko, He is the way, the truth, and the life. Wala nang iba. Hindi ako nagsabi niyan. Sabi dito, no one comes to the Father but through me. In fact, si Jesus himself ang nagsabi niyan. Right? If we be- really believe in Jesus, we need to we need to uh, accept this truth in our hearts. Tingnan niyo tong diagram na to. Kanina, sabi natin yung sinful man na tayo na sa ilalim, ang Dios na sa ibabaw, sino ang connector? This diagram illustrates that God has bridged the gap. Jesus bridged the gap no which separates us from him by sending his son. To die on the cross in our place to pay the penalty for our sins. We were talking about this last Friday during the, the Bible study about the seven last words. And one of the questions is that, Bakit niya sinabing, I thirst? Bakit niya sinabi na, Why have you forsaken me? Because this is Jesus who is 100% man who, na talaga nagsasuffer in pain. Na supposedly, ikaw yung nagsasabi na nauuhaw ka, supposedly, ikaw yung nag- umaangal na, why have you forsaken me? No? Yung, 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 yung sin, ibinato lahat kay Jesus yung kasalatan mo, yung ginawa mo, yung, yung may ginawa ka na ikaw lang nakakaalam na ayaw mo sabihin sa iba, na pinagkakatago-tago mo sikreto hanggang ngayon, lahat siya sinalo ni Jesus. At yung karumal-dumal na ginawa nating kasalanan, naging uh, parang barrier, kumbaga tinalikuran ng Panginoon because He is holy. Ibinato na lahat kay Jesus para malinisan ang kasalanan mo. To die on the cross in our place to pay the penalty of our sins. The truth is, it is not enough just to know these truths. No? The fourth truth, we must individually, this is very important, receive Jesus Christ a Savior and Lord. Then, we can know God personally and experience His love. For by grace, you have been saved. Oh, thank you, Lord. Salamat sa Diyos. By grace. May kilala ka bang pangalan? Deo Gracia. Ang ibig sabihin ng Deo, Diyos, Gracia, Grace. Misa, niluloko na, pangit mo na pangalan mo, Deo Gracia. Great ba nanay mo sa'yo? Ba't yan ang pinangalan mo sa'yo? May binibiro kami dati, classmate namin, pangalan niya, Deo Gracia. Then eventually, na-realize kung ganda pala ng pangalan niya. God's grace. Right? For by, God's, for, for by grace, you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. That as a result of works, that no one should boast. Hindi dahil sa kagagawan mo, kundi kagagawan ng Diyos. Kaya sabi mo sa katabi mo, you must be born again. You see, when we receive Christ, we experience a new birth. Right? Sinulat yan sa John 3, 1 to 8. Magkaiba po yung born again na tao. Kasi minsan ang tawag sa atin, oh, yan na sila, Ronaldo, yung mga born again. Hindi naman tayo mga born again eh. We are born-again Christians, right? Ang born-again is a process. 
So, hindi, siya, hindi mo siya pwedeng gawing tao. Pag sinabi mo, oh, she's a born-again Christian, she's part of the denomination or non-denominational na, na not necessarily Catholic or tinatawag natin mga Pilipino na protestante. But, na, enough of those tags, but being born again is just being born again. You were born again in spirit. Tinanggap mo ang Panginoon. Meron ka ng experience of new birth. Tinanong yan ni Nicodemus, di ba? Sabi niya, ibig sabihin, babalik ba ako sa tiyan ng nanay ko? Hindi. You don't have to. It's being reborn in spirit. And I'm sure you experience that. We receive Christ by personal invitation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him. It is important for us to understand na ang Panginoon ngayon kumakatok sa puso ng mga tao na gustong tanggapin siya bilang Panginoon at Kapagligtas. Kung ikaw man, palagay mo lumayo ka sa Diyos at gusto mong uh, i-rededicate ang buhay mo, kumakatok ang Diyos sa iyo araw-araw. You see, receiving Christ involves turning to God from self. Yun ang tawag doon ay repentance. And trusting Christ to come into our lives to forgive our sins, and to make us the kind of people He wants us to be. Just to agree intellectually that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He died on the cross for our sins is not enough. Nor is it enough to have an emotional experience. Says, kahit patumulo ang sipon mo at luha mo, hindi enough na umiyak ka lang. Ibig sabihin, nalungkot ka dahil nagkasala ka. Right? Kasi ako, na-experience ko yan eh. Ilang beses na akong nag-trip down, uh, ilang beses na akong naglakbay sa aisle na ganyan, sa simbahan namin. Ilang beses na akong pumunta sa altar call. Umiiyak pa ako, may paluhod-luhod pa ako eh. Tumutula ang aking luha, sipon, halo-halo na. And I felt good after that. Pagkatapos, lunes, balik ako sa kasalanan ko. It's not enough. Emotional experiences are not enough. Turning around, if if this is sin, ibig sabihin na magte-turn around ka, is that you will face God. Okay? Wag kang, 180 lang yon, kasi pag nag-turn around ka ng 360, babalik ka doon. Hi, sin! Di ba? So you have to turn around 180 lamang. Alright? Alam nyo, ang tunay na repentance, nag-decide ka na hindi ka na babalik. Paano kung babalik ka? Eh, di bumalik ka sa Diyos, humingi uli ng tawad. We love because He first loved us. Bakit ko ba naintindihan ng pag-ibig? Dahil tinuro ng Panginoon sa atin. Sabi dito, this is love. Ito ang tunay na pag-ibig. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, pursue the love of Jesus. Resurrection Sunday means love and forgiveness. We talked about the first story. It's a story about love. Now let's talk about the story about forgiveness. No? Pagpapatawad sa Tagalog. Alam nyo, once upon a time, there was a king and a prince living in a beautiful kingdom, a beautiful palace. Napakayaman nila. They are rich. No? Sobra. And they own many colonies. Madami silang mga, mga tenants. Madami silang trabahador. At napakabait ng mag-ama na ito. Napakabait ng hari. No? At uh, sa kanilang rich kingdom, ang plano nila ng ama, sabi ng, ng mahal na hari, one day, I wish, dahil since napakayaman ko, I wish to share all my wealth to all my people and invite them, not just to leave doon sa mga colonies na yon, but to go inside doon sa malalaking walls ng kingdom niya and live with them. Wow! Meron ba kayo nakitang hari? Na, for example, si Queen Elizabeth, no, she's, she's inviting all the people of Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom to live in Buckingham Palace. 
That's impossible, right? But this king, no, he wants to invite all his people to live with him and give all the resources na meron siya. Napakabait, di ba? Ang problema, he's a rich king, but all his people are poor. Bakit ganun? Rich siya, tao niya, mahirap. Kagagawan ba to ng hari? No. In fact, gusto niya talaga na kung mayaman siya, mayaman din yung mga tao niya. Right? The problem is, these poor people, they believe the corrupt officials, the representative of the palace. Uh, they corrupted all the money. They told the people that your king doesn't love you. Your king hates you. And in fact, he wants you to remain poor. So the people all rebelled against the king. So one day, he decided to send his good prince. His good prince. Sabi niya, anak, pumunta ka dun sa mga colony natin. But do not appear to be a prince. No? Huwag kang pumunta doon na with cavalry at saka, you know, parang mukha talagang hari at mayaman. But go there as a peasant. Be one of them. Check mo kung ano nangyayari. And offer them a beautiful life here in the palace. For all those who will believe in you and acknowledge you that you are the son of the king, offer them to come and they will live here. And then this obedient prince, humble prince, a prince of peace, went to the people and live among them. But the problem is, well, some of them, they, they, well, they acknowledge you. You are the prince. You are the son of the king. But a lot of them, most of them, they hate this prince. Why? Impostor yan. Bakit? Parehas lang natin, no? mahirap. Madumi din yung damit. Pero he's claiming to be a king. He's claiming to be a prince. Impostor yan. In fact, no, he, they planned to kill him. And they succeeded. They were able to kill him. That's what they thought. So the prince went back to the palace. Because all the people thought that they were able to kill the prince. At the report niya sa kanyang hari na ito po yung nangyari. And some of the people are with me. And some of the people who believe that you are a good king and I am your representative are still there. But sabi ng Hamalahari, well, my kingdom, my kingdom's door, my kingdom's gate are open for them. But for those who rejected you, they will taste the wrath of a king. You see, Sabi nung mahala, mahala prinsipe. But Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. Grabe, no? Ginulpi ka na, halos pinatay ka na. Tapos sabi mo pa, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. This loving king is trying to persuade his king, his heavenly father, his father, that these people are worth no? Word of his life. So please open the doors for them. And, this, and, the, and, the, and the, the king said, I will give my forgiveness. You exemplified true love among our people. Imagine, yun ang response niya. Forgiving king. Ang tanong, what is forgiveness? Alam niyo, Pag pinatawad ka na, forgiven means that all the wrong you have done is no longer a problem between you and God. <gasps> Totoo? Yeah. He treats you as if you had never done it. Yun ang totoo. Huwag kang maniniwala sa enemy kapag ka sinisisi ka niya at kinokondem ka niya sa ginawa mong kasalanan. Tanda mo, kapag humingi ka ng tawad, there is no condemnation. In Christ Jesus. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you're not perfect, but you're forgiven. Right? 
Sabi sa Jeremiah 31, 34, I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Ganda, di ba? Kakal- Ikaw nga, hindi mo nga makalimutan yung nagkasala sa'yo eh. Hindi mo nga makalimutan yung inangutang sa'yo na 1985 eh. Kinukwenta mo pa nga kung magkano interest na hanggang ngayon. Right? Pero sabi niya, I will remember no more. Kaya it is worth no, na humingi ka ng tawad ngayon. Because He will remember no more your sins. You see, one day Jesus was arrested. Eto na. His enemy set up a fake trial and it was decided he must die. Kagaya niyo na experience ng good prince. He had the power to escape. Kasi prince siya. Prince of peace, king of kings, lord of lords. But he chose not to. Why? Because he was obeying his father. Kagaya ng prinsipi na yun. The Roman soldiers made fun of him. Tinuya siya. Using long, sharp thorns, no, they made crown and pushed it into his head. They dressed him in a purple robe and hit him hard, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Ano ka? Diba? Parang, para sa lingwahe natin, O, ikaw ba ang mga hari ng mga Pinoy? Sige nga. Parang ganun, tinutuya siya. Soldiers marched Jesus to a hill outside Jerusalem. Anong sinabi ng death march sa Tarlac? They, there they nailed him to a cross. They put a sign above his head. Ito pa, tinuya na naman siya. I-N-R-I, Jesus Nazarenus Rex Iderum. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. People watched Jesus hanging on the cross, but they did not see all his pain. At midday, it became dark as God punished his son for our sins. That is what made Jesus' death the worst ever. Kasi sinalo ka niya. Supposedly, ko ipapalo, ay papako, sinalo niya tayo. When it was over, Jesus cried out, It is finished. Tapos na. And he died. Nako. Some of his friends lovingly put, he, put his body in a cave. They had so hoped he was the king, he was the Messiah, but now he's dead. Paano na? Sabi ng mga kaibigan niya siguro, nako po, nasayang yung tatlong taon natin pagsama-sama dito. Kala ko pa naman ito sa- salvation natin. Paano na tayo ngayon? Alam nyo, lahat ng mga disipulo niya, kaibigan niya, sumusunod sa kanya, even those people who, nung Palm Sunday, sabi, Hosanna, Hosanna to the highest, lahat ng pumupuri sa kanya, nawala lahat yun. Eh lalo na nung namatay siya. Diba? Sino na tira? John the Beloved? Sino pa? Si Mary Magdalene? Yung nanay niya? Some of the women? Actually, ang natira, mas madaming babae. Girl power. Diba? Ay ako, I love women in ministry. Honestly, they are one of the most no, talaga namang maasahan sa ministeryo. Kaya pagdating sa ministeryo ni Jesus, kita-kita mo, ang naiwan, nasa na mga lalaki? Ayun, nanonood na NBA. <laughs> eh, yung mga babae nandun. In fact, ang nakatuklas na wala siya, sino? Si Magdalena. Amaya, ah, panoorin niyo ang ganda. Sabi niya, tetelestai. Sa Greek word, ang sabi niya, it is finished. You see, the rulers made sure no one would get into the cave. A large slab of rock was rolled across the entrance. It was sealed and soldiers were put on guard that Saturday was a long, sad day. You need to understand your history, your cultural background during those times. Under sila ng Roman Empire. Ang Roman Empire, hindi ko makuha ng, ng ano, ng, ng, sabi, ang pagkaka-describe, no, sa mga Roman soldiers, at least six footer. 200 pounders. Ibig sabihin, malalaking tao to, Di ba? So, ibig sabihin nila, kaya daw nilang uh, bumuhat ng 50 to 100 pounds na, na, na armors habang naglalakad. So, nakakatakot to. Intimidating tong mga to. Right? I remember when I applied for Philippine Military Academy during, at was 1989 ba? 1990. Tapos merong list 
no? Yung mga qualifications. Ito yung mga list ng qualifications sila, nakatuwa. Meron silang height na at least 5'7 ba? 5'5 o pataas, whatever. Tapos, uh, pero nakatuwa doon, bawal lang duling, bawal lang sakang, bawal lang piki, bawal ang... Uh, walang ngipin sa harapan. Sabi ko, artista tayo na hanap dito mga to. Eh. <laughs> Pero because they're, probably they're, they're trying to groom the future uh, generals of our country. Same thing with the Roman Empire. Hindi sila maglalagay ng dalawang gwardiya na pipitsugin, na patpatin. Ibig sabihin, intimidating, mean machine to mga to. Pero ano nangyari? As the soldiers were put on guard, the angel of the Lord came. Ayun, takbuhin pala itong mga ito eh. If Jesus had not died, nobody could have their sins forgiven. Remember that. God must punish all sins because He is always right and fair. Diba? But God loves you so much that He planned this rescue mission and sent His Son to suffer and die. Yun kasi yung principle eh. May kasalanan, dapat bayaran. So para hindi ka na magbayad, si Jesus na nagbayad para sa'yo. Jesus loves you so much that He was willing to take the punishment you deserve. Jesus died no, to save His people from their sins. The Son of God loved me and gave Himself for me. Galatians 2.20 Early on Sunday, there was an earthquake. Yan na, in Sunday morning. In resurrection morning. An angel came and rolled away the stone from the cave tomb. Nagtakbuhan na yung mga guardia. The frightened guards ran away. Some women, ito na yung mga bidang babae, girl powers, woohoo! No? Some women came to the grave. He's not here, sabi na isa. He's alive! An angel told him, sabi pala na angel, hindi ng babae. Sabi, niya dito, sabi na angel, wala siya dito, buhay siya. Sabi niya, hali kayo, tingnan niyo. Come, look. The women looked and later, Peter and John went in to see for themselves. You see, hindi si Peter, hindi si John ang nauna, mga babae. Kasi tingnan niyo yung senaryo, ha? Libingan yun. Di ba nakatakot? May patay doon. Di ba? Mas nakatakot kung yung patay na wala. Imagine niyo, di ba dapat, sino unang titingin? Uy, ikaw na, ikaw lalaki. Sino pumunta? Sino yung nag-check? Di ba? Natawa nga ako eh. May nagpa-counsel sa akin, Pastor. Counselan nyo nga yung asawa ko. Kasi may lagnat ako eh. May lagnat ako. Sabi ko bumili ng, ng, ano, ng gamot sa CBS. Eh, ang lamig. Alas doon sa madaling araw. Di ba CBS 24 hours? Ang sabi ba naman sa akin, tumayo ka, kaya mo, baro ka na mag-drive eh. Anong klase yung asawa yun? Minsan, ano, may ganong katamaran itong mga kalalakihan. <laughs> Mabuti na lang yung asawa mo mabait. Sabi mo, tingnan mo yung asawa mo. Mabuti na lang, bait-bait mo. At mahal na mahal mo ako. Pero nasan itong mga lalaki na to? Di ba? Di ba dapat kung mahal nila ang Panginoon, sila una mag-check? Bakit yung mga babae? Dahil mahal na mahal nila yung Panginoon, hinahanap nila, namimiss nila. At yun, natagpuan nila, wala pala doon. The women looked and later Peter and John went in to see for themselves. Jesus was not there. Nasaan siya? Where was he? You see, Jesus was alive again. Ito na. Dito na nagkalabasan. Sige, sabihin na natin, payabangan na lang. Sino ang Diyos mo? Sino ang Diyos mo? Sino ang Diyos mo? Okay, I tell you the truth. Lahat ng Diyos niyo patay. Hanggang ngayon. Yung Diyos ko, buhay. Amen? Pwede ba natin palakbakan Diyos natin? Abay, malay ko sa mga Diyos nyo. Yung mga Diyos nyo, inaagnas ngayon. Yung Diyos ko, buhay. Hindi lang buhay. Hari ng mga hari, Panginoon na Panginoon, at continues to intercede for us. You see, Mary Magdalene met him in the garden where the tomb was. Jesus joined two friends uh, as they walked along the road. He suddenly appeared in the room where his friends, uh, his disciples were. They also met him on the lake shore and had breakfast with him. Actually, pinagluto pa sila ni Jesus ng ano, tilapia. 
Ang totoo, tilapia. Kaya tawag sa tilapia, St. Peter's fish. Bakit? Si Pedro kasi, yung hiyang-hiya. Imagine mo, tinatwa mo ng tatlong beses, nakita mo, pinagluluto ka ng breakfast. Di ba? Ang bigat nun ha. Mabuti pa sana na after mong i-betray, pinagbumura ka at inaway ka. Mas okay pa yun, mas madali pang tanggapin eh. Pero after mong i-betray, pinagluluto ka ng breakfast, pagmamahal ang binato sa'yo, binato mo ng tinapay, ay binato mo ng bato, binato ka ng tinapay. Di ba? Kaya kayo mga misis, pagka nagtampo kayo sa mister niyo, pagluto niyo ng breakfast, huwag niyo lang lalagyan ng Dora Rat Killer, ha? Over the next 40 days, more than 500 people saw him walking around. 500! 500! Nakakita. Okay? May witnesses. King Jesus was alive and he would never die again. One day, Jesus and his followers went up a mountain. As he was talking to them, his feet left the ground. He went up, up into the sky until a cloud hid him from view. Ito na naman, lumabas na naman si Angel. Sabi niya, as his friends kept watching, two angels came. Sabi nila, he will come back in just the same way. Muling babalik ang Panginoon. No? The Lord Jesus Christ had returned to heaven. Kagaya ng prinsipe, bumalik siya doon sa kanilang kingdom at nag-report. Sabi niya, meron po ako nakasama, in-acknowledge po tayo, Meron po po naiwan doon, in-acknowledge tayo. Pero sabi ng ano, malari, o oh, sige, yung mga hindi naniwal, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Kasi po, nililin lang po sila ng mga corrupt officials natin, a.k.a. enemy. Right? Alam nyo, yung enemy, hanap damay na lang yan. Panalo ka na eh. Right? There is nobody like King Jesus. Nor there is salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must save. He is the only one who can rescue you from sin and punishment you deserve. You can have forgiveness only through Him. Wala nang iba. Only He can help you live God's way. He is the only way to God and heaven. You see, King Jesus is in heaven now, but one day He will come back to our world. He will punish forever all those who have chosen to live their own way. He will welcome all his friends. They will live with their king in his wonderful kingdom, which never ends. Hindi po ang Disneyland ang totoong happiest place on earth. Ang happiest place on earth ay ang paraiso ng Panginoon. Jesus Christ can be your Savior and King. Una, will you agree with God that you have sinned? Are you sorry for the wrong things you say, think, and do? Are you willing to leave God's way and turn around and repent from your wicked ways? Do you believe that Jesus took the punishment you deserve when He died on the cross and rose again? Kung ikaw nandito, nanonood sa Facebook at sa YouTube, no? do you want God to forgive your sin and change you on the inside Ayan po yung magandang tanong sa umaga na to. If your answer is yes, talk to King Jesus now. You can tell Him something like this. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, I have sinned and I am sorry. I believe Jesus is your Son who died for me and rose again. Please forgive my sins and help me live in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Alam niyo po, alam niyo po if you tell no, this or something like it, there's a greater promise no, in the Bible for you. Sabi ng, sabi ng Biblia, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. When Jesus Christ rescues you from sin, a whole new way of life begins. Sabi nga ni Aladdin eh, a whole new world. Mababago ang mundo mo. Totoo po yan. Na-experience ko po yan. Na-experience ng maraming tao yan. You will never be alone again. He promises I will never leave you. Your king is always with you. You can talk to him about anything at any time. You will get to know him more and more 
as time goes by. Promise po. Jesus, your King, will help you live as He wants. Even when it is difficult. These words are in the Bible. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? Alam nyo, when you sin again, eto na, paano, Pastor, kung nagkasala ulit ako, tinanggap ko siya ngayong umaga, eh mamayang hapon, nagkasala ulit ako. Alam nyo, mga kapatid, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And He will remember no more. Tanda mo yan, sabi sa Jeremiah. Kaya lapit lang, huwag kang sumuko, isuko mo lahat sa Panginoon. You learn more about God and His ways. You need to read the Bible. This is very important. Read the Bible. Join Bible study groups. The Bible is God's book, so it is very important to read it, believe it, and obey it.